in ahimsa. But when we are judging up, when we are thinking about judging up, are we in ahimsa? Yes. Right? When somebody walks in the room, you've got to start listening to what's inside here. That critical voice that lives inside your head has either got you slaved, enslaved, or you got it. So you've got to think about that. That critical voice is the one that says, I can't do that. I'm too fat. I can't do that. I'm too thin. I can't do that. I'm too this. I can't do that. My nose sticks out too far. I can't do that because uh, nobody would ever believe me because I'm not. All of those things. That's that critical voice inside our head that when we allow it to work, we're not in ahimsa with ourselves. We are not in ahimsa. So you got to take it, you got to take it, and you got to say, I got this, I can do this. Right? I got this, I can do this. Yes? I do that all the time with my spin class, right? My spin class is like, oh my God, I can't do it. Gear 20, let's go. And they're like going, ah. And I'm going like, you can do anything you set your mind to. But the moment you say, I can't, you won't. You won't, right? So start acting with ahimsa toward everybody, everything, including and starting with yourself. Because the more you act with ahimsa, the more balanced your chakra number one will be. Right? So make sure that you do that homework. That's important for you to bring to bring in similarities. Oh, I see, how does that work together? And then the chakra number one being out of balance, the body will give you symptoms that look like diseases if your chakra number one is out of balance. And doctors are now finding that it is a contributing factor to illness when our chakras are out of balance. It is significantly now becoming mainstream for the doctors to talk about energy center. Especially many of our doctors like myself that go, have um, gone through school at the um, Arizona School of Integrative Medicine, okay? So it's important for us to realize that, uh, that what we think affects how we are. There's been studies and studies and studies of people that will think themselves into illness. And we don't think so, but let me give you a story. And this was a true story. There was a man that worked in a um, packing, uh, um, uh, meat packing place. And he was in he was in and out of the freezers. He was in and out of the freezers. And so one day, he decided to work a little bit late. And he emptied out the freezer because he was going to clean it. When he got to the last um, carcass, he moved it out went back in, the door closed. Boom, he had had it propped open. The door closed. The door was a little bit jammed. He pushed it and he tried it and it was a little bit jammed. He started to sweat. Now mind you, you would think that he would have frozen because this is a freezer, right? So he started to sweat and he started to bang on the door and he started to hyperventilate and he was running from, from wall to wall and when they went in, they could actually see where he had scratched the walls, okay? And they could actually see where he, he was hitting the door and, and kicking the door, right? And this went on and this went on and this went on overnight. 
in the morning time, and you know, and he actually um, he inscribed in the wall. He inscribed with um, something he had found. He uh, inscribed, "I love you, my family. I'm sorry that I am gone this way." So. I mean, this man was already thinking he was going to be dying, right? He was already going to be dead. That was done. He was going to die, and that was it. That was his thought. In the morning, they found his body. He was dead, okay? What they couldn't figure out is why he died. Because the freezer was not locked. And when they found his body, it was frozen. He died of hypothermia. And they couldn't figure out why, because the temperature in that freezer was 68 degrees. That's not enough to freeze a body. So he thought himself into death. He thought he was he thought he was locked in there. He thought he was frozen, and guess what? He was frozen. They couldn't understand it. Isn't that interesting? We have such a powerful mind that if we learn to access it, which is why this was again, I repeat, this is given to 12-year-old boys who are ready to, for a successful life, when you harness the power of the mind and bring it into the body and use it according to the laws or the rules of the yamas and the, the eight steps where you're actually using it for good, magic happens. Magic happens. Okay. It's very interesting. And and be real careful, be real mindful because we're going to go into what's called the flu season. <laughs> right? And you're uh, and those of you that watch TV because I don't watch TV. Those of you that watch TV are going to get suggestions from very powerful suggestions from all the commercials. They even, they, they, I mean, I was like, they even put somebody sick right there. So what happens is now it's like you walk around to him and he says, how you doing? Well, my throat's a little tight. I don't know, maybe, you know. And, and watch how you, you actually have the power to make yourself sick or to make yourself well. So we need to act with a himsa. Go back to Ahimsa. Be nice to yourself. Listen to that critical voice inside your head and change it, guys. Change it. Right? Now, I love to do um, a little bit of um, show and tell at this point in time. So, um, I want to show you the power of your words. Okay? And then I'm going to give you time to, to, to try this out. Um, You look strong. Where's your name? name? (laughs) Okay, we're going to go over here. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually do what's called kinesiology. How important that is, how we speak to ourselves, is extremely important to our physiological body. Right? And so this guy looks strong. Would you say he's strong? I would say he's strong. Okay. Are you right handed or left handed? Okay. So put your right hand down. Okay. So when we're clearing energy, we're going to take our three fingers right here. Everybody do it with me because I want you to, because you're going to try this, except you, my videographer. And (laughs) you're going to tap right here where that, that D is, right underneath there. That's your thymus. You're going to take three breaths. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. 
Inhale. And exhale. Okay, so now we have cleared the energy. Okay, so with after each time I, I suggestion, I clear the energy. Okay, so we cleared the energy. And I want you to close your eyes and no smile. Okay. And I just want you to resist me, okay? Because I'm going to push down on your arm. So just resist me. All right, I'm push, I'm, he's strong, guys. <laughs> it's like, I'm not even budging the arm. Can you see that? It's like I got my whole weight on this thing. <laughs> right? He's strong, right? And um, so we're going to clear... And we're going to now test. Three times all of Okay, keep your eyes closed. Say the words, I can't, and then resist me. Did you see how easy I did that? Did you resist me? Did I pay you? <laughs> right? Do you see? The words I can't will weaken you and your immune system and your muscles. The muscles don't lie. The body doesn't lie. Okay? going up, right? Because I can strengthens you. Am I holding? Am I pull? Am I like, can I hang on it? I can probably hang on it. Because he said, I can. The words I can will strengthen you. It also works with, um, with other things. It works with food, too. So shall we try it with food? All right. Here we go. the arm out. Say, pepperoni pizza, is this good for me? Pepperoni pizza is good for me. And then hold. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. You not better eat pizza. Right? Now, if I were to, what is your vegetable that you really don't like? Carrots, okay, so let's try carrots. 